neither of these teams have played in a BO5 that went to five maps yeah. this year. So we are truly in undiscovered territory right now. And both of these teams are writing history as it happens. I think the Desperants have a really good point. DRX, you'd expect them to look better on their defensive side because that's what they kind of dominated on yesterday against FPX. Optic, it's the opposite. Yeah. Despite the fact that their composition looks very defense-sided, they actually won primarily because FNS's attack side calling was beautiful in the game against Xset. And it is such a punt to go for the Phoenix Killjoy Chamber comp to define whether or not you make it to the grand finals of champions. Most important tournament of the year, and you're seeing a clash taken directly head to head. Pistols in the hands of the opposition. There's going to be that exchange of fire early on, just the one for one. For now, space already being gained here. Direct going for the reclear in short. Yay being punished just for his hubris, but FNS plays being made one after the other. And as the last man standing, he delivers the goods. Brendan, that's another one of those FNS refuse to lose rounds. His classic oh my is goodness. so good and so underrated. But he's just working magic with that gun. So many pistol rounds, he comes out with something special there. And that one just runs into the site to try and defend the rest of his team who were getting overwhelmed. That is a very crucial pistol round to get Optic going. One to get him at the right foot at the start of this as well, the pistol round. So this is the most Whoa. classic approach that DRX have on their attack side Haven. They are going to smoke off and they are going to fight for the orb. Sometimes they don't smoke, sometimes they triple swing, that kind of thing. But either way, they're going to try and load those alt orbs into stacks. You see that stacks has the spike right now as well. So much of their early round game plan is around right fighting for C long control, get the orb, then decide what to do. A potential amount of counterplay as well. There's a nano swarm on the common plan position on B. Even one tucked here, which they can hear. DRX are looking to see if they can clear this one out, but it's a bit of a corner angle, makes it difficult to do. Not sure if that one was got off there, but still pace injected. DRX want to be just trying to take their lead, moving all the way in here, and it's FNS who cleans up the kills. Spectre in his hands, whips out the sidearm, and he's got the support of the rest of his teammates. Prime Gaming Flawless to get us started in map five of the lower bracket final. And think back to what Bala said, DRX were really struggling on this side of the map. Of course, there was a Viper in play there, so weird comp. But uh, this is a weird comp as well yeah. that DRX are playing. So nothing standard whatsoever here. Yeah, you're pretty happy about that one. But at the back of Optic's head, they will be thinking about all of those times where things haven't quite gone right for them on Haven. Yeah, picked and pulled apart at the seams, especially when they last played this map on their defense side. Doesn't so make the most sense in the world, but all right, the Bala was highlighting it about the previous times that Optic have gone up on the global stage playing this map. Serious read on B right now. Ye was holding with his Marshall and Victor thinking about pushing. They also have all of their Killjoy utility here, and Victor's tucked in the corner. I mean, just everything happening around B. Slight. Slight offset there, the angle of the crosshair placement, almost nailing the headshot onto Buzz. Still doing a lot of damage. Yeah. Here. Body shot might do at the end of the day, might do quite a bit. And it's so interesting the way that Optic are playing this, because Victor's going to get contact way before the alarm bot does, so the alarm bot not really that useful in the round. And DRX are moving over towards A, an area where it's only Crashies, who's used a Prowler right at the beginning of the round, and now has no idea whether people are creeping up on him. But there's just something tickling at the back of Optic's mind that they need to go and help him. Oh, yeah. And the timing could not be more perfect. Such a good read on this. And the shot finds its mark. Too late down by Ye. One prior earlier in the round. There needs to be an attempt from T-Rex to try and make the moves. The horn over the top. And it's just a slight jiggle. With the movement and the spectres, a spray down is not in order. Or is it? Stacks with the rifle. Not enough to reset. Optic claim the bonus. Yay, back on the chamber. Five and one to start. That is not half Such bad. an early time. This was the start that Optic were looking for. To try and deny any shot, any chance of that DRX reverse sweep from becoming a reality. 
And that almost looked physically like Termi hit the reset button. Yeah. Reaching over and making sure that his team takes a moment and takes a deep breath. Rex have never been in a spot like this before. But they've been so good at pulling their way back into this series and previous series in Champions. It doesn't feel like the same team with a tin foil mental. But a timeout like this, I think, does signify that. It's very early on for some kind of strategic change across the board. Yeah. It has to imply that there's something off about the comms, the way that they're playing. Yeah, I would agree. I think at this point, you can't really have too much of a read of how Optic are playing. You've only played the pistol round and the bonus round. Yeah. So I think you're right there. And we're going to be heading into DRX on a round where they don't have any guns to play with. So the timeout, if it was strategical, is not going to be for round four. You're going to be looking towards round five when rifles are in the hands of these Korean players. And that's why this round ends up being a really interesting one, because it's mostly about ult orbs. You might think it's about doing damage to the optic economy, but they've got so much money. So actually, it's about feeding ult points into the hands of the right players. Deep Seas will find that connection. There's no utility to really follow up on the down, obviously. Optic not opting to run the raise, which you see more commonly. And it's down to crashes just to try and push them back at the util that he's dumping here. Look at the positioning of Ye right now as well. This is another hard read from FNS. He is so deep in the back of the B site with a rendezvous to escape. This is him getting set up for a big B hit on an eco round. And this is FNS's IGLing style. He loves to hard read his opponents and try and get into their heads. He said against Loud yesterday, right he'd there. never been lost like that in a series before. Yeah. FNS usually with the right idea of what's going on. It's not the correct read this time around. It's DRX set up for an A hit, but it didn't give anything away. So the Victor has to start using those flashes though to try and push this back. How has Buzz got that? Crash is removed from the fight. Another flash play to Kerbal. Landing right around the side, being swarmed by the Sheriffs. What an opening for DRX. And an Swarm dropped down to the feet of Ye means he can't follow up on all the damage that his team has done, not just yet. But over the top now, FNS. He spotted, he spotted Mako going for some kind of TP play. TP play there. Moves back though, two rifles in their hands. Josh comes down to this, Mako trying to reposition. Smoke laid down and he is in trouble. Bit That's of spam, a bit of fire, 2v2. The rifles, they made their way out of the smoke. RB not covering it, not watching it. Off to the side, a spray down. And you've got to have confidence in these scenarios because time is running so low. Yeah, he's trying to take the fight. What a spray and what a shot found. Absolutely magical stuff. And what a round to get DRX back into it. That is huge. But I've got a question what the heck Optic were doing on their A defense. I mean, there, there are definitely players overwhelming them, but when you take a look at the replay here, sure, Buzz finds a great opener, but then you've just got Victor trapped on the back of the site. He used both of his flashes and didn't swing off any of them. His teammates were holding the right side of the box, but he just never chose the timing to fight. Way too scared from Victor there. Yeah. Bad time to lose the nerve. In map five here, the lower bracket finals. And that is going to have Big ramifications for DRX's confidence. In a situation where you could have kept them against the ropes, they now believe they can win. Splash is definitely connecting as a punishment. That's forward, you've got to be joking. That is absurd from Buzz. Just a little bit too far forward there with the aggression, but an instant play being made. The pivot, but yeah, Marv is here. Marv, they know he's here. An attempt was made there. TP onto the site. Now a rolling thunder pushing them back. Paranoia is beautiful. Mark cleans up, Zest with the swing to try and fight back. But what can be done here with a spike has been dropped down? There's no tools to try and reclaim this one, and it's a double up. In fact, even the ultimate being committed here. Oh, what? Spray down! And the lockdown will not do squat! I don't think I've ever seen a spray down like that before, Bren. RB has just pulled. One of the most insane spray downs I've ever seen in my life. One HP. He gets left. away from FNS's lockdown and pops down one of his own. And now everything's in the hands of Ye. And he's going to be running into the alarm bot at the back. Deactivated due to how far away RB is. Forced to commit the spike. Timing. Timing is everything. Zest in the corner. He's low enough. Ye could find one shot. 
to turn it into the 1v1, and he gets the right read. Doesn't know how to pick up the rifle, wants to play fast into this one, because he knows Abby's low, and the warbangs. Five bullets. Surely he goes for his Abby swings, and wins the 1v1. I do not believe it. The level of confidence. And I'll be a player, Josh, a player who's been criticized over and over again for not putting up the numbers in the big moments. But watch this. I still don't understand how that shot hit Crashy. Just disgusting. He killed them both at once. Did he curve the bullet? But you're right, Bren. RB has faced so much criticism. He never looked like a big game player. But he's never played a bigger game. And the team took such a gamble sticking with this five-man roster and changing the roles around, putting RB on Killjoy. Yeah. And it is paying dividends here, where it matters most. Optic left reeling after the beginning to this map. Back-to-back -back rounds from DRX stolen from right underneath North America's nose. And what is this buy? I mean, yeah, has a tour de force. There's a couple of rifles out here. It's all over the place. It's a half buy, though, and Optic have been dangerous on these rounds. Victor, back to the side now. That's the flash. Going to be using it. Great timing of it, but weapon just not quite good enough. In fact, look at this. Buzz expertly moving away around his own smokes, isolating the fights one after the other. And Zest covering for FNS as well, who was trying to make a play to deny. Buzz with another dash, <laughs> getting out of things. And Ye left in a 1v5. As the rest of Optic are left to sit, stew, simmer, and wonder what has been going wrong in these rounds. At this point, has to be a swing there. Don't want to take the fight to Ye, though. Lack of confidence, perhaps, showcasing it just a little bit, but in a 1v4. Still four. four players ready to deny the spike. And all the post plant utility, aftershock into the corner, another nano swarm. Ye realizes he's got to give this one up. And what a recovery of wow. this half by DRX so far. Three rounds in a row from Optic, and they should have been ready to go up to four, maybe six. They had DRX against the ropes. And what an incredible counter punch this has been. Yeah, right Throwing off the back of the timeout. Yep. Speaking of Optic, deciding it's time for one of their own. That's that's a bit of a rough challenge by Crashies as well. When DRX are taking a B hit like that, you've got to anticipate that they're going to fight. verge of being the first team to complete a reverse sweep in a BO5. I wouldn't have thought they had it in them. No, I'd be like, ludicrous. What year? In 26? Yeah. Yeah, maybe give it a couple of years and DRX will be at that level. But they've pulled it out at the final event of 2022. Most important stage of the year. It feels like they're back into this. Yeah. And they've, they've got Optic up against the ropes. But... Timeout being taken by Optic, and they've been good in the past with this one. What kind of adaptions are they going to be making? It's a fast play, flash over the top, the Haunt. It's destroyed, though, and a lovely stun into the corner. How is Buzz just leading them in like this? Incredible utility. The execute perfect for putting pressure on Ye and FNS and setting up Buzz on the entry. That is immaculate. A textbook play in how to set up your jet entry player. You just have to save if you're Optic. You just have to save. Goodbye. Good night. That round is over in the first 30 seconds. The timeout that you burnt was off the back of that round. The adjustments that needed to be made. Just nothing. <laughs> nothing to buzz, apparently, especially when he's been supported in this way in form. And Victor's still holding on to his run it back. Yeah. I mean, Victor's had his ultimate, and the whole 
idea around running Phoenix on this map is that the Phoenix can be very mobile, move around, grab info, but also, crucially, it's going to get alt cycling. You're going to get an ult, you're going to use an ult, you're going to very quickly build it back up. It's not being used. They, they just haven't had the moment. There's no opportunity to. Take a look at this replay here. The stun, so it's a fault line, a paranoia, Buzz finds the perfect moment to dip out just as the fault line disappears wow. and the paranoia comes in. And the paranoia just sets up both of those kills immaculately. Yeah. And that's already after Ye has been pushed off his aggressive C long line by the Haunt. So every piece of the utility is so precise. With the coming timing. out from Zest, Sax, and Mako works in unison. And the warbang damage on Davinta. That is a lot. <sighs> and it's going to mean he doesn't have his armor for the running back if he chooses to invest the ult this round. Pretty big difference. Setting themselves up, though, for the C split. Yay. Could be, again, the deciding factor. Operator watching the angle. What is going to be used to try and push him off here? Paranoia cut close. Going to be a close flash. Move. And it's just a pre fire from Ye. Respect being shown. Victor moves down into them. And that's the running back finally being used with Ye at the back of the side. Anchoring, holding, spray down. Zest. What a timing. Pound for pound, answered back. And they're not done yet. Marv, though, on the flank, picks up Zest. And he might be able to settle this round back down. Stax is now left in a 1v2. Had a very rough beginning to this BO5. But Zest is finding more and more value. Here comes Marved on the peak. The timing. Information. Yeah. Knew exactly where it was. And that Great round for Optic to get back into things. And off the back of Ye. <laughs> off the back of Ye being full blind, right? I think I've got to give credit to Victor here too, though, because he had the narrowest of timings to be able to disrupt this push. And even though he does get caught afterwards, it is important that you continue to apply the pressure there because Ye is trying to escape. So he needs someone to intercede on his behalf, and that was Victor. So now you've got barely any ultimates in play, and yet a very decisive gun round at 4 4. Big fight over the A lobby happening right here. Players grouped up. Prowler's going to be lashing into a common position. They know that Mako, the most likely candidate for who actually teleported to cut it across. That was a seize over the top, I think, that they wanted to maybe make a play off of, but there was nothing else to try and combo with it. Yeah, they could have gone for a seize hot hands, but frankly, it wouldn't matter anyway. Mako had already evacuated. Yeah. I like the way that Marv is taking deep positions on C. Here comes a B hit. Crash has got punished last time. Pop play straight into the site. And there it is. Crash is finally returns with the damage. And there's the spike being denied on top of it. Not done yet though. A bit of a dodge attempt. And the spray down of Victor. It's not the cleanest thing in the world, but it does the job. There's a much better response from Optic when it comes to their B site defense. <laughs> And I'll be not allowed to play. No. That flash gets Ye onto the line. Every connector's being watched as well. Oh my word. Headshot there, but yeah. Ye locks that down. And all of these rounds, Bren, have to be taken in the context that from what we've seen, on only one instance of both these teams playing Haven so far at Chaps, this would be the weaker side for both teams. Yeah. I love the way that Crashy's played that though. Last time. He got pushed in the A connector. And so this time he tucks really deep in the corner uh, where he can try to punish Buzz. And then once he realizes Buzz isn't pushing, he has a timing wow. to get the kill on the Korean jet and then swing back through and deny the plant. It was still very aggressive, the positioning that he held, but it got the job done. And a timeout called for DRX. Remember, they burnt up their previous one. Right after the bonus round was won by Optic. Something to potentially settle the nerves in their last time out now to see if they can get some sort of adjustment going, but it's three rounds left in the half. Yeah, there is not too much time. But again, DRX just want to back up as many as they can right sure. here. I think, though, you've got a great point. With the way that Optic played their attack side on this map before, all around FNS's IGLing, that feels like a side where you would want to get Tommy's input. You're leaving your players a little on bit. an island, yeah. I think, honestly, when it comes to that second half of this map here in such important situations. Another round where there's no big ultimates to speak of. 
and yet it's another crucial one. The money now evening up quite a bit. So it looks like there's going to be gun rounds for most of the rest of this half. There. Marved in an anchor position at back B as Victor, Ye, Crashies try to fight over A lobby. Similar kind of setup that they used before. The Prowler, hot hands in the corner. I love that. Yeah, Buzz just has to use his updraft to try and avoid most of it. And look at this. Pushed up deep into short. Battle about to take place. Maka wins it, but yay! Collateral at play. And it's a fast attempt by DRX to try and take some space. Move back onto the angles, but yay, already repositioned up to heaven. Smoked off though, and now the paranoia cuts its way through, and Victor was left alone but marked. At the back of the site, could be the hero at need, and with the trademark at their feet, the slow field not enough. And a spray down tonight. Marv with a triple kill there. Going from his anchor position in B, running all the way through to hell. But that round was won by Ye with the collateral. Because that fight was not going in Optic's favor. If you look at the kill feed right before he gets the collat, Crashies died. Crashies was trying to go for a reclear of Shaw using Marv's paranoia. And if Ye only gets one or if he gets zero there, the DRX are just going to flood into the A site, and Marv isn't ready. Victor would be Let caught. It would fall. be a disaster. And Ye saves them again. DRX, though, are kind of winning these A lobby battles. Marv set up for another paranoia, but chooses not to go for it off the rip. We've seen, we've seen Victor in this position before, but he didn't get challenged. Look at how much of a gap there is as well between the presence in the middle of the map. Defensive protocol, Optic, nowhere near. There's no utility. Yeah, but the triple up. I think they're just happy to play retake in that kind of situation. Yeah, of course. FNS just glancing towards B. And nobody got contact on A long. So these three players, they're going to use the haunt just to clear both of those cubbies. And DRX have heard it. Yeah, they heard, heard the it. haunt. Akko heard it. They heard the haunt, so they're going for the contact read clear. This is such a beautiful call. Crashes is holding the ankle. So narrow. A wider swing. He gets the information, which is what he was looking for, but there. Crashes. You can't overstep yourself here, son. It's just an info war right now. And Crashies is looking to challenge. Up close and personal. Where's going to be the swing? The off here. angles there. Flash into the corner. What coverage! And play. Mal dances back. Sprayed out on top of the boxes. And guess what? No side whatsoever. FNS is more than ready to play. Here comes the, the flank, the lurk from RB, 20, but he's got it all to do. 20 seconds in the round to do it. A he lockdown, knows positioning. A lockdown wouldn't even be usable here. It just takes too much time. And he just doesn't know where the rest of the players are. Too much time to even try and grab the spike as well. He's got too much to clear. Wider swing and FNS just absolutely sublime. Top to bottom. The IG Last yelling there from both sides. The I've got to commend. I think Stax found the perfect timing to try and contact the clear A lobby, but Crashies was jiggling it, and as soon as he saw a couple of people moving into A lobby, he knew to call the rotate. And these rotates flooded into the A site. Mark was there, what? FNS was there to back up Crashies and repel that site hit. And now Optic have a fairly commanding lead and a big economic advantage heading into the final round of the half. And this was the half where they struggled against Xset. Clearly improvements being made, but a lot of ultimates online. Buzz just wants to take the lead with the rest of his team once more. Knives in his hands, Blade Storm, and another swarm. And has forced the updraft. What's going on? Play. The TP! They're crumbling before our eyes. The DRX, everything to prove, but Optic with the prime game in flawless. Contrast that round to the previous C exec, and it is night, night and day. day. And Josh. No more timeouts. No more timeouts on hand for DRX. Just a raw battle of the wills between the IGLs. Maybe just assuming that the, the flash had forced Ye to use his rendezvous, but that one that one looks like a car crash in slow motion. DRX have such a comeback to try and attempt in the second half. 8-4 down. So, so difficult. 8-4 being the half. Let's hand it down to the desk to find out if it's really possible. Well, Optic, they're starting to run away with this, but things could have been a lot worse, Seth, if it weren't for RB.
Yeah, it could have been 9-3 again for Optic in the lead, and they would have had to pull off yet another miracle run. 8-4, though. Still, a little bit rough around the edges here for DRX. Things really falling apart of the back end, and as Brent was mentioning, now no timeouts, but RB has been a big bright spot for the team so far. This is the guy who has the pressure on him. Last time they were in a decider game, he stepped up at the final hour. He's doing that again, but has it been enough? Yeah, and it's actually as well, Finesse, who's doing really good stuff on the kills on the other side. This is where I thought it might turn for DRX, because they got three rounds after this thrifty win with a couple of sheriffs just pushing the back of sight. And we could have seen definitely a little bit more of a snowball off of this, but you can tell DRX is still here no matter what. No matter if the half is 8-4, no matter if Optic's in the lead, it's still very much doable for both sides. Yeah. It's not a great position to be in here if you're DRX. You don't want to have to make another crazy run back like you did just yesterday in this position. But we do know that their defensive protocols, the setups that they have on the defender side of this map, are incredible. And on the other side of things, as we look ahead towards the second half, there have been some questions around this attack side for Optic, and previously it was surprisingly good when they played with Victor on this Phoenix. He was getting really aggressive, finding these deep positions, but I think the biggest thing for DRX to do is shut this Phoenix down early. Have Buzz playing on those long angles. Don't let him have that gap close, because without that dive agent, Optic can sometimes struggle to get into those close situations where this composition does thrive. Yeah, I mean, you saw a lot of times where Victor's getting up close, being able to flash and get Ye on angles. That's very much more difficult to do on this attack side. The resiliency has been great from DRX thus far, but they have to find it within themselves for another comeback if they want to complete this reverse sweep. Yeah, well, Optic also, are, they are on the verge of heading to yet another grand final sideshow and brand. Let's see if they can close this one out. The veteran presence of Optic definitely rearing its head here in the final map here of our lower finals, but all questions of the mental blocks, the obstacles that DRX have faced throughout their entire lifeline in VCT would be dashed away if they were able to come back here. This is the side where Optics IGLing just looked sublime against XSET. Not necessarily to do with the composition, just FNS's understanding of Haven. And that's what Stax and the rest of DRX are gonna be up against here. A hard read on the B hit, and it looks like it might be correct. Inside the smokes. Yeah. So close. A bit of a brief fire that smoke's gonna be fading away. Just to remove that alarm bot. Such a minute difference there between Victor getting the alarm bot kill and getting killed. Moments away from it now. Time is being burnt down to a crisp here with a minute remaining. Still no signs of Optic really making a concrete decision on which side they want to land on. Both of the fades were having a little jiggle peak battle over at A long. And Zest. Zest lost out on that. They weren't really firing at each other. It's just that Zest was worried there'd be multiple people and he'd get punished. So now it's a full A retake setup. The spike is nowhere near. Yeah, the spike is in a completely different direction. You do not expect this ever. On a pistol round? That is to make the fake play? That is such an astounding amount of utility used. A prowler, a haunt. A paranoia, all used to try and go for a fast retake that wasn't even real. And it's completely opened up the side for them. Optic, the push and pull of the rotations. DRX have got such a massive ask ahead of them. No more utility, it has to come down to the fights being taken. And the crossfire set up with the pistols. Optic just too good for it, Marved. Pushing inside of the smoke. No Maybe overstepping himself just a, a tad. A reflank and play here by FNS. Has to try and make some mark. The horn over the top, DRX. They seem to be just barreling their way through, and FNS oh. is now found out. He's now known. But survived the classics, missing in the shots. DRX take the pistol. All of the weight on DRX's shoulders, and they pull through in the pistol round to get up to 8-5. They will have a chance to make this series within two rounds. Get themselves back in here with a fighting chance. It looked so rough. I mean, they fell for the fake. They used all of their utility. Yeah, nothing, nothing. They, need, they needed Mako to swing out in the widest swing I've ever seen. Just so that the retake had any legs to it whatsoever. Yeah. But now DRX are gonna have two Bulldogs, three Spectres heading into this round, ready to fend off Optic. They're gonna have to be ready though for wild breaks like that. FNS is definitely digging deep into the playbook on Haven. Throwing that out. 
in the decider map here. Push to the limits in a best of five. Only a finesse apparently, but Buzz gonna be taking contact now and not enough space granted to him. Dashes back away, Cloudburst cutting it up, but still the shots are found. He's given a right angle at the back of the site with a frenzy at play, and at hand Marved, ripping them apart. Remaining. The Mako's still alive, and it is just down to Marv's with the Bulldog. 1v1. Anything's possible in the 1v1. Four kills for him, and a Red Bull cast clutch is an instant response, an instant answer back. Earlier in this series, all we were talking about was Marco. Marco, Marco, Marco. Did we forget about Marv? I mean, this, this map, Marv has put on what you expect from him. A masterclass performance. And I, I think, the I, think I agree. That puts the economy back on the line for DRX. It's Only pistols here. And, Bren, I've been thinking it all tournament. When is Marv going to show up? And Optic haven't needed it up until now. But this could be the final hour. And the best controller player in the world is finally showing you why he has that title. Lovely shot onto RB. And it has just, winning that round out, TRX are just being tossed into free fall off the back of it. The economy reset when it was looking so good for them. Get another round. Now a play being made. Haunt over to the side. It's going to be the fault line to slow them down. Mako blows up in his own smoke. It's going to make Optic think twice. Bring them down. Optic are in a 5v4 though, and they have their, they have their run of the map. Cover going out. Buzz only with a classic, and he's pretty much the only player that could be dangerous for them if they pivot back into A. Although the spike appears to be shepherded toward B. Be giving a bit of false information there, just spotting Ye out. Snacks is low. The smoke, it's just overstepping himself again, and the players of Optic already lurking their way through. And how tragic is this for DRX? Three times now in this series, they've won a pistol round and immediately lost the follow up. That response by Optic, wrangling back control of many of these maps. DRX now are going to be in such a tough spot. Yeah. The emotions are so hard to control. You go through the elation of winning the pistol and believing that it's doable to despair. To getting it ripped away from you with no more timeouts to try and make the most of it, to try and settle the nerves. Oh, a knee has out. been found. 10 5, that's the scoreline, and Optic. Look like they are once again carving their spot in the history books. Fending off what could have been the first ever reverse sweep. What still could be the first ever reverse sweep in a BO5. DRX pretty much have one last shot. If they lose this round, there's no hope. The full investment, weapons across the board. Optic looking like they want to take this one a bit slower. Spike dropped down in a pretty secure and safe location. Just farming up the orbs onto Victor and getting him his ultimate there. The run it back now available. Yay, yeah, spots RB. But very minimal damage exchanged. Here. Optic with a very passive hold as well on their default. Shadows. Using that prowler down short as well. But they need some way of pushing Buzz off the angle. Crash is just trying to jiggle peek it. All of this is merely a distraction as yep. well. And it has done a job of pulling Zest and Buzz still over there. It's up to RB to jump peek. <gasps> Shot through the wall. Almost got his head taken right off. And the spike is making his way back over towards C. No. A change in the decision making. Buzz. And guess what? Zest still up close. Right here, right now. Could be the difference maker for them. And what discipline, what patience. The play is made and the spray down. A collection of two kills and a reset of the aim for Zest. Absolutely magnificent. One enemy I tell you, Bren, there are not many players that would keep their cool in a moment like that. Down five rounds on the final map oh, of a BO5. But Zest was so calm. 
And if there's ever a moment to prove to you that this is a different DRX squad, it's that one. Yeah. To hold your fire like this and not bottle it. And potentially, <laughs> potentially, the most important round you would have faced. You lose this one. You're down to a poor buy. Optic are on 11, but no. Optic take their timeout. The last one remaining to both of these teams until we get to OT. And I think that this is a good moment for Chet because you might have counted DRX out had you won the round, but this is a different squad you're playing against right now. This feels like the true Korean super team. A team that has persevered. A team that has fought back in many moments at Champions. A team that's really battled and overcome their own demons and has been able to shut down the devil himself on the other side of things too. You're facing a team that has grit and it's going to take everything from Optic to close this out. And they've been pushed to the limit. <laughs> now heading into map five here. The timeout obviously signaling that Optic. They don't want to let this lead slip away from them. Crashies and Victor have massive ultimates here. They've struggled to get Victor into the game and find him opportunities to use his run it back. But when they can set the pace, perhaps they can come up with a game plan here. RB with an extremely similar defensive setup to what FNS himself was using. We've got some classic A lobby control. Optics comp is really poor at taking okay. A lobby control, but they're fighting for other areas of the map instead. And a runner back as well. Destroying of the alarm bar here, Victor. It's all a Playing fake. Close, it is a complete fake. Yeah, it's pulled them all the way back into the corners of the side here. Mako needs to be the playmaker. Where's the trade? And the anchor right now, still being sworn from either side. Oh, guess what? RB ready to hold his teammates back. There is no trade in action, but maybe Ye can be once more the difference maker. Nightfall now pushes across. RB getting no sound. Gives a flash play over the top. Stax wants to make the moves for them. Swinging down. It's just up to Victor. In that 1v2, but Stax has already taken the positioning. That is a shutdown play from DRX. But I'm struggling to see how Optic uh, thought that one was going to get coordinated. The fake play is lovely. And the thought process from FNS, wonderful. But where's the players pushing together into backside there? FNS out on an island, and Marv, who's normally the biggest trader for Optic, choosing a completely different and non complementary angle to hold. And they just couldn't clear backside at all. Made it far too easy for Mako. The hero rifle for Marv. He's got a hot hand. Yeah, I mean, this has just been knocked all the way down with Optic losing that round. As DRX were taking control of the map, and potentially the series. Still a hard ass for them though, and yeah, he's got the Tour de Force in his hands. This fight that might be about to take place over towards A could decide quite a bit, but still, again, it's Optic with the spike leaning over in a different direction. That's down into the bottom of mid. Part of the reason Optic's attack side when they were running this comp was so good was because FNS was so willing to Make the right call, he had great information. Our attack side was always making sure that they filled in any sort of gaps in defensive protocols. The spike is heading its way towards B right now. Yeah. It's another fake. It's another fake. I mean, FNS is just full of them. But it's the execution, not the macro, that's been the problem. Victor needs to do some damage here with one kill. Doing a decent job of things. Look at the pinch from B. Yep. Squeezing them right where they lie. And still Buzz, a whiff and a shot, the shot he pulled down, but he can't win it. 30 seconds left. Beautiful, beautiful eye gelling by Optic. Adaptations being made, the layers on the strategy. And the A anchor players were just lost in the source. Wouldn't you be? I don't know how you expect that play to come through. And that's an audible as well, I'm pretty confident. Because when you look at the play, it felt like a fake. But then as soon as Victor and Crashy start to get value, FNS calls, okay, let's actually pinch from B to A and make this finish A. Our A fake is working too well. And now the pressure back upon DRX. The squeeze that they felt in game there on A, now playing out within their mental realm as well. DRX are opting to force into this one. RB forced down to the Bucky by. Let's try and hold down Garage. A deeper angle with the smoke, blocking off one. 
of the avenues just outside a lobby. Here. It's Buzz versus Ye. This fight could define so much in this round. Who blinks first? The ankle, the shots. Did Ye spot him? Did Ye find it? Just contacting across, but it's not called in time. Buzz had three different targets he could play off there. Victor moves his way across, stacks. Perfect battling play. back, man, battling back. Enormous help by Stax there. And now Marv's in a mad position. Just has to pivot into the C site. Pinging it out, seeing if he can go for a uh, a pre-aim. Pre but if there's anyone to do it, Josh, it would be Marv and Ye, wouldn't it? The two of them have been playing fantastically in these later few maps. But it's also been... I suppose. Oh, no way. 30 seconds There's left. no way Marv has taken this fight, man. The rival! Not favored in close quarters. Not in that instance. And a spike has been given over. Who expects a bucket to be there? Teleport's ready. And now Ye left in a 1v4. No time. No time. No possibilities. Maybe you can do Ten some damage to the economy, but now Mako holds it, anticipating the push. And this... This series, this map has been so back and forth. On a knife's edge in terms of who might take it. It's going to come down to the wire. Marv gets a swing out there, and FNS just walks into the angle. There's some serious comm problem happening there. They knew that the operator was posted. I mean, maybe just assuming the buzz would have left, but you'd expect FNS to at least jiggle it if it had been come to him in time. And look at this. Optic have a really rough buy. Crashies with only a pistol to work with. And there are many Here. ultimates in play. I mean, this is the round to invest every ult at your disposal. Here. And another op battle to start things out. Yeah, he crouching. He's holding the angle for the repush down A long. I feel like this whole series has been Yay V Buzz. Right across. No one following it through. Wait a second. There's a flash pre fire, Buzz. Rewarded for this reposition of Zest again. This is going to give DRX a ton of information for the defensive protocol. Now they've got to know. <sighs> You've got to be kidding me. Just an absurd situation up in A lobby. Back to back. Yeah, he got flashed onto this angle. And he's so tucked, Zest cannot see him. But do Optic have any idea that Zest could be here? Half jiggling. They They're think it's clear. Into the corner this time. Good trade. Great trade. Cool not being kept. Nanoswarm gonna be pushing them back here. The spike was on B. The spike. Victor had it running into the B site. It's, in the it's just out in the open. There's a lockdown that was placed down a little bit prior as well with that A lobby control. But it feels like DRX are not biting him because look at this positioning. Mako, he's still here. Still waiting in the half clear. It's not good enough. What a trade! The trade off. And Marv is gonna be making his moves now towards it. But where is the time? Where is the spike gonna land? These are the moments where Optic was incredible against Xset. Setting up these pivots, these lurks. FNS could be the playmaker here. It's gonna destroy the lockdown for them. And B is gonna be gained, at least with it, but the angles are watched down anyway. The spike is planted. FNS has to go huge. 1v2, flash, a dodge, a juke, a half on it. One more kill found. Eight bullets in the clip, and it's not enough to do it. Stacks. And FNS, the battle of the IGL is manifesting itself. What a round for DRX to win. What a round for Stax to recover. A 1v3, very possible there from FNS. And, and DRX actually able to keep up the same tempo that Optic were playing at. Optic are moving around the map so quickly, so fluidly, it can become difficult to keep track of where they are and which areas are safe. And DRX are doing a, a really good job of keeping them in check. This next round, you're heading into Optic on a half by. Yeah, he goes for a hero rifle, miles away from the Tour de Force. But the rest of the team with Stingers and a Spectre in hand. This looks like DRX should be in a position to tie up this map, tie up this series. We said that before, but never count Optic out! Second time's a charm for Buzz, still locking down the angle, and he wants a little bit more. Shorty has to be pulled out in play. Another curveball right around the side. Victor, no ammo in the clip, but the right click will do it. Again, the tip tap of the aim stacks. You can feel the nose playing an element in it. Victor with only 13 bullets left. Still gets the kill, an instantaneous trade. 
11 to 10 the score. Oh my god. That one way too close for DRX. Victor with four kills. Buzz got a great entry, but then got caught by the paranoia. Caught by a flash as Victor played the entry in there onto A very nicely. Victor's Phoenix on these AXX is finding value. I would be very tempted if I was Optic to try and lean into that. The fast tempo is almost working on the half by rounds. Another couple of weapons, and maybe that could make the difference. Matt Run is it. being pulled away from you. Run it back by Victor in his hand because he was able to get those four kills on the half by round. Back to back. And another thing for DRX to keep in the back of their minds Marv has the ult and the spike. He can go anywhere, fake anything. Possibly a play being made though. Into Garage, I'll be playing the anti flash. Aftershock into the Nano Swarm there. Plays the corner. Now Victor wants to make the play, make the moves, running forwards. Bit of a spray down does not come up with the goods. Not like he was looking for, but still stacks. Looking to anchor. At the back of the sight and just the tail end of the ultimate. Yay capitalizes. All the space being gained. Reset again. Yay is the difference maker. The trading from Yay here has been fabulous in this round, but it is not over yet. Not by a long shot. The Back spike away. isn't even down. And Victor in a position where he basically oh used his ult from now becomes a backstabber. He is the backstabber. And this hook line sinker, a classic play. Buzz. Down to Buzz. Buzz has been a miracle worker, but the dash pops just simply too early. Maybe oh, he gets boy. an opportunity of Victor. Doesn't but he's he looking is. the wrong way. Three, ra th three kills in the round for Victor. An optic. Put on map point, put on series point. Two of them as well. What a beautiful running back from Victor. Popping through that smoke to get a kill at logs and set up Ye for the trade. Normally Marv is the player that goes in aggressively trading off the entry, trading off Victor. But with this cop, it's Ye trading off Victor. And the duo working so well getting more value from the Phoenix than I've seen out of anybody at Champs. And they have two opportunities to cement their place in the third grand finals for Optic. A record in VCT at their fingertips. One round is the difference maker here. That's all that stands between them. DRX, Zest forced down to a very shoddy buy. It feels like towards the end of this map, towards the end of this series, FNS, whatever the calls might be, it's pushing and pulling and DRX struggling to come up with the answers. Buzz only has a Spectre here, trying to control this a lock position. It is an impossibility. And already, he's going to try and get the no punish way. off. Cancelling the ultimate just in time. What absurd awareness from Buzz that that is a play that could have come through. And a hot hands into the back and an Anna Swarm is a set play. Curveball as well. Buzz has been dealt with. Two kills for Victor. The spray down in action once more. A rolling thunder. This is the last chance for DRX. Disrupt the play. Victor holds down. He locks the angles through. And it's all on the shoulders of RB. But Optic moments away from carving their rightful spot in the grand finals, and there it is!